I'll, I'll start again. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the O'Neill DNA Project. And today we're going to talk about the developments in the O'Neill DNA Project. Uh, my name is Sean O'Neill. I'm one of the administrators of the, the O'Neill DNA Project. And we have two other members of the administration group, Fred Mulholland and Dwayne O'Neill. And we also have Ed O'Neill, who, who didn't travel. And we, we'd, we'd like to thank him for all his efforts over the years. Um, Ed was the original uh, uh, founder of the O'Neill DNA Project. And he co-authored a paper back uh, 2005 or thereabouts on the insights into the O'Neills of Ireland from DNA testing point of view. And he continues to co-administer the uh, DNA Project at, at the moment. Fred and myself joined the project uh, uh, a few years later. And that progressed very well. And this is followed on by Duane, who followed a few years later. Coincidentally, coincidentally all four of us are engineers, and, uh, which, is, which is something. So the four of us coordinate the project. And what we try to do is match up the genealogy of the O'Neills with the DNA that we find. And we try and encourage people to select uh, the correct tests so that we can match match the DNA to the genealogy. And we try and focus in on uh, new DNA tests as they become available. So uh, just move on. So at the moment, we have 645 members in total in the project. Uh, 480 of those kits are, have, have, uh, have Y DNA tested, uh, 170 of those to Y111. 90 to uh, big, big Y, and 10 kits uh, were still waiting big Y results. The development of big Y has been a very significant step for the DNA project, and they, uh, Dwayne and Fred will talk in detail about that. Um, uh, the remaining kits have also done Family Finder and uh, MT DNA tests, so uh, that's, that's, that's all good. So. Um, uh, I think without further ado, I'm going to introduce Fred, and he's, he's, uh, he's going to talk to us about the first part of the project. And uh, I'd like to welcome everybody who traveled from America uh, and, and from Canada. So Fred, it's all yours. Yeah. Thanks, Sean. Well, with luck, this thing's going to stay around. Uh, let's see. Uh, when Ed started, he did have a good starting point, better than most of the other projects did. We had genealogy, uh, I call it the, the barge recitation of the kings of England, which led us to have these lines here. You can see the Herman line, the Herbert line. There were four very distinct groups of O'Neill. Each one had an O'Neill founder, the namesake. Uh, so they were all related way back, but then they were distinct. So uh, that was a very good thing for Trinity College to work with. You know, can we actually break out these four groups of O'Neill to say they're different? And they actually came up with a signature. And this was when they only had 37 STRs. They were saying, each of the O'Neills, this is what they are. Now, also as part of this, the most famous person within the line of kings that people knew was uh, O'Neill of the Nine Hostages, O'Neill Nile Nar, more. And so they looked at that and they says, well, if you, you need to have the SNP M22 to be related to him. Now, M22 is older than him, so some of his cousins would also have that. So it doesn't necessarily mean you're absolutely descended from him. But if you don't have it, that means you're absolutely not part of that descendant. And the other thing they discovered when they looked at all the O'Neills and they did that, here was this group that didn't match anything at all. But they're all up in Ulster, close-knit group, didn't match anyone. So they did have to work with that and figure out what that was. Now, he talked about the paper that Ed worked on and published about 2005. In that paper, he says, let's call this just O'Neill variety, just so we have a way to reference it. So that's that unknown group. Now, when you look at the 
Y DNA, and you look at the haplo trees, you're coming down from R. When you come down six levels, you get down to the M269. M269 is what today family tree DNA will give you when you do your very first DNA test. If you're going to be part of these lines, you're going to have the M269. There are, in the group, we, there are some that are actually, they're not R, they're I. There are some that are not M269, they're another branch. But these are the ones of these four lines all fit under the M269. And then you can go down further. Now, the thing about M269, now that Family Tree has put out their Y Hopla tree, you can go in and see how many people there are. There are approximately 77,000 people that have done and became M269. Of those, about 15,000 have done nothing else. They're just stuck there. They have not done any further testing. So that's where it'd be good to get a little further testing, move down the tree. Now all of these groups, again, are down the tree, another five levels, to the P312. So again, you're just coming down closer in time. And that one, if you go over to the big tree, they actually have dates on there. And they put on a date of their 2675 BC. But you actually have come down in time closer to the present. P312 is where things split off the first time. That's where this O'Neill variety goes one direction, everything else comes its own way. And they call the first branch they have is the Z290. Then it goes down and gets up with DF13. And that, the meantime, did a common ancestor, you're at 2145 BC. You really came a lot. But that's where, again, everything starts breaking down into what are these four groups that were part of the original genealogy. Now, again, the dates are from uh, the big tree. They have a way of calculating dates. But dates you have to take with plus or minus 25%. So although it gives a date here, that's approximate. You can't be, those are not hard dates that you can set in stone. So this actually does kind of match up with the Bard's recitations a bit, if you think about about a 1690 or so. Now, as an American, I can never pronounce that name, so I'm not even going to try. <laughs> uh, but, but that's your first branch. Uh, and again, these SNPs, all the SNPs have a name. And the first letters say, who came up with it? And then they just number them so that they make no sense whatsoever, but they're there. So that branch, um, then the Unil branch goes down another way. And then what you didn't particularly expect was the Thoman and Leinster, Leinster come together one level down before they branch. And that's not really what was expected, but that's the way it has ended up going. Now, if you... Within the project, we break it into groups, and the first group we had there was 1A, the UNIO. And in there, what happens when they say it's an M222, that's actually a block of 15 SNPs that happened, we all assume, sequentially. And if you look at those and say, well, how long did it take to get those mutations? It's about 2,000 years. So you have about 2,000 years where there's no branches. This just goes from one point down to the other. Now you're 140 BC. And again, this is before Nile of the Nine Hostages. And naturally, this is at this time. And at his time, you're still well before surnames. Now, in doing the big Y test, we had this large group. And it appeared as though everyone was going to be a, what's called a DF-105-109. That's because family tree DNA uses one number, the big tree uses the other number, so you put both down there. So that way you'll be able to find it. Um, that brought us forward to about 390. I think there were only two 
that did big Y within the large group of the M222, which did not follow this path. And so they're still sitting there at the M222 level. Now in looking at the DF-105, 109, all of a sudden you look at them, more people did the big Y, more did the big Y. Half of them fell into this other SNP, so we broke that out and put it out separate. And so we formed 1A, 1A, therefore you can say it's, it's branching down. But that's one of them. We have the other people left in there, and there's five different SNPs where they could come down. So you got f six branches there. I've only identified one. The others have one, maybe two there. So we're still trying to build up enough people to say there's enough to really have a branch. One of the things I hate is to look at here and here is a branch with one person. I don't like those, so I try to avoid those totally. So make sure that there's a, a couple of people in there. The other thing we found here is that if you look at a person who's in this group, and we go to his page and say, well, how many matches does he have? And then how many are in the O'Neill project? 2 to 15% are in the O'Neill project. So there's a lot of people that just haven't bothered or joined the O'Neill project, which could help identify and tie this together closer. So particularly if anyone has done a big Y, you need to try and get those that have done big Y grouped together in the same project, and preferably the O'Neill project. This just shows essentially what I was saying where things happened. Uh, you'll notice under the 39589 there on the left, I got a slash. That means there are some branches before you get down to M222. Under that, I have number of people. And again, at M222, you're before surnames. So in 1A, there's 63 people of those 39 or O'Neill, or some variant of that. We broke out the 1A1, there's 24 people, only four are the Neil. 1A1A, there's 14, there's only three. So this is not necessarily the best branch for the, uh, the O'Neill surname. It turns out, as I said, there were six branches, this is one. This is not the branch with the most SNPs underneath it. There's another one. But there's right now within our group, there isn't enough really to break out a, uh, another group. But if you look at the FGC 11134, there's only 20 in there, but 19 of them are O'Neill. So this is a group where the O'Neills are joining if they're in that group and going in there. But again, it's only two to 15% of the people that have that um, SNP. Then I show we got the breakout of the Thoman and the Leinster. And when I put like a 1D, a 1L, that is the group. If you go to the O'Neill project, you look at the groups, that's the group. Now as they've been doing the, the big Y, and I look at that, I say, well, I probably need to move some people back and forth. The 1D is the one that was identified at first. That is going to be Thoman. But with that same SNP change, there was another group whose STRs didn't quite match, which is why we have a 1L. So the STRs don't quite match, but they both come down the same SNP tree. But you're quite far back in time. So it's hard to say. You're still around... 1600 BC. So it is, you could have some changes there. And then we have the Leinster, which again, here we have 15 with a surname of O'Neill or their variant out of 22 in the group. L513, there's a couple of groups there because their STRs don't look the same. And we don't really know what that group is. What are they? They're just unknown. They have shown up. They're in here. And again, there are some with the name O'Neill, but they don't seem to fit these categories that were created. DF-21, there's the COLA. Now the COLAs, the three COLAs were assumed initially to be part of the M222. 
but they are not. And the Colas have their own website that goes into the whole thing and explains where they came from and the fact that they came over to Ireland later and they were not part of the original group that came over. Uh, and we only have two in there. Glen of Aherlo, that was uh, a group that sort of self-identifies as we want to do this. They do show up separately, if you look at the DNA. Interestingly enough, the one down at 3G at the very bottom, turns out he should be moved up there. Because he's done the big Y, it shows that, oh, well, he matches back into that group, so we can move him back up there. And then 3E, we just don't know what he is. Where did he come from? Now I'm going to talk a little about, bit about O'Neill variety, and then I'm going to hand it over to Dwayne to go into the gory details about this. But the, the real question was, you know, where does this sit on the hoplo tree? And a number of people, including me, were very frustrated for many years because we're stuck at 312, no snip below 312 until they got big Y. Then they started doing things and they came up with the DF27, was identified, now we can have a branch. After a while, they came up with the PH2047, hey, there's a branch under that. Then they came up with the Z1513. This group is Z1513. Everyone in the group will be that, although many of them still are stuck at 269, M269. If they test, they will come down to Z1513. Okay, so here's a group. What are they? Well, it turns out that they replaced the Tyrone O'Neill line. That if you start looking, coming down the line of the kings of the O'Neill, who's in charge, you know, who's the lead, the, the O'Neill, all of a sudden it switches over and becomes the Z1513. Um... And so if you look at this group, and this happened before the Clanaboys split, so you got the Clanaboys, you got the Tyrones, you got the Fused and McShanes, all fall into this category. So this is after the O'Neill name was in place. So you have some O'Neill name, M222, and then all of a sudden this one takes over. Uh, where it came from, we don't know. One of the things is, this is another one where there's a block of 25 snips and you, there's no branches. So you're going back 3,000 years. Where has it been for those 3,000 years? We don't know. Now I put on some guesses here, Scotland and Spain, for two reasons. One is, my assumption has been, which is good as anybody else's assumption or is bad, that they brought in warriors to help the Irish into fighting in the war. So if they brought over, typically they would come maybe from Scotland. Uh, the reason I have Spain there is double because Spain and the Irish worked uh, together fighting against the English. And if you look at the DF-27 project, there's a lot of arguments about the origin of that and there's a large group that says, my God, it is the Basque in Spain, up in northern Spain. So, it could be. My assumption is, which is pure assumption, is that they had this people come over, they were helping the fight. One of them was a very natural, known, good leader, good fighter. Marry him off to a daughter. He's got a foreign name. Change it to O'Neill. Two generations later, it's all O'Neills. But that's a something that might, might have happened. You just don't know, and we probably never will know, but I like that one. And now I think it's time for Dwayne to get into the gory details. Comfortable enough? I believe so. Okay, You've got about 20 minutes or so. Yeah, good. There you go, you're live. <coughs> Thanks, Fred. Get the uh, focus of, um, let's see, I'll just move the slide forward one. 
Yeah, the focus of my portion of this presentation will be on the O'Neill variety group. And the O'Neill variety is associated with, uh, as Fred mentioned, haplogroup Z1513, which is downstream of P312 and DF27. The O'Neill variety groups are 1B and 1B1 in the O'Neill surname project, with about 117 members in total. The main group of about 29 members is negative for the downstream SNP BY3292. The BY3292 positive subgroup has about 24 members. In addition, there is about 64 members that are very likely said 1513 positive, but may or may not be positive for BY3292 since they've only tested to 67 or fewer SDR markers. This is a slide of the uh, big tree for uh, Z1513. About 25 kits so far have upgraded to big Y, and this is currently the Z1513 clay representation on the big tree. The Z1513 SNP block, as Fred mentioned, also named FGC49734 on the big tree, has about 25 uh, SNPs. So that's shown right there. Oops, I hit the wrong, there we go. At present, there's four sub-branches, including BY3292. Which is, oh, I did that the second time, which is shown there. Then a, another branch, BY32400. And then a larger branch, BY3127. I'm sorry, this is BY32400. And then a third branch, this is BY31270. I've got to practice this. And then there's a fourth unnamed branch here. Uh, an age analysis for the most recent common ancestor of Z1513 was completed, and it was done based upon taking the average of the unmatched variants plus the name SNPs for all of the kits and using a range of 100 to 144 years on average per SNP. So the most recent common ancestor estimate for Z1513 was... Sorry. Was 832. Okay. <coughs> Thanks, Morris. Okay. So the uh, age analysis for the most recent common ancestor for Z1513 is uh, 830 to 1170 AD. Then using a similar approach for the most recent common ancestor estimate for BY3292, so that would be right in here, would be 1250 to 1465 AD. This is another representation of the Z1513 Big Y kits. 14 kits have completed Big Y testing for this cloud that are BY3292 negative, with results from another three kits expected soon. Most of the kits have an O'Neill-related surname, with some of the kits specifically identified from the Fuse and the McShane branches. Note that the eight big Y kits under B BY3200, so these ones in here, they okay, don't have any SNPs to identify potential sub-branches. One would expect that one or more SNPs for each of these potential branches, since SNP variants occur on average, as I mentioned, every 100 to 144 years. It appears that for about a 300-year period, no SNP mutations occurred, resulting in each of the potential BY32400 sub-branches not being identified by SNPs. Not shown on the slide are an additional 12 kits that are part of this group based upon signature SDR markers. Okay. 
So both the big Y and the STR kits are shown on this slide with some signature STRs added. The first signature STR is DYS-435, which is highlighted in green near the top. This one here. The uh, modal value is 12, but it mutates to a value of 11 for the BY-3292 branch, which is shown on the right. Next, uh, STRDYS-534 in general has a value of 14 for the two leftmost subbranches. Rather than the value of 15, then DYS-449 in general appears to differentiate the center branch from the two on the right. And finally, DYS-715 values appear to differentiate the two leftmost branches. So in essence here, we're using a combination of SNPs and STRs to put in, in the uh, overall form of branching for Z1513. Now this here is a uh, slide shows a very simplified version of the traditional genealogy for the Tyrone McShane fuse branch. The Clannaboy O'Neill and the Tyrone McShane fuse branch is split about 1200 AD with the sons of Lazy Youth O'Neill. So Lazy Youth is uh, here and so then there is the branch here for the Tyrone fuse M McShanes and second branch for the Clano Boys. You may recall that the Z1513 most recent common ancestor was estimated to be around 830 to 1170 AD, which would have been prior to these two branches forming. And you also may recall that the BY3292 most recent common ancestor was estimated to be around 1250 to 1465 AD, which is more recent than the two branches forming. Some of the Z1513 kits that are BY32 negative have also been associated with the Fuse and McShane branches. Next, we'll look at the BY3292 positive clade with 24 kits as shown in subgroup 1B in the O'Neill project. So this is the O'Neill project listing for 1B1. And then I'll show on the right are most of the BY kit, big Y kits on the big tree. So this next uh, view is, combines the big Y results with STR and SNP results. So I'm not expecting you to to uh, take this all in at once. So what I'm doing is doing, going to do three slides over the next two, how it builds up to this one here. So it'll build up by overlaying big Y results with signature STR results, then finally specific SNP results. This slide shows the 11 BY3292 big Y kits and the likely position of the three kits with big Y test results pending, and those kits are indicated by the yellow and green box coloring. So we're expecting within the next few weeks to get results from these three kits, and we're expecting them to maybe form sub-branches as a possibility. So there's three branches. One of the branches in the center has two sub-branches. And the third branch, which on the right, may have three sub-branches. It's likely that the leftmost branch, which will form one or more sub-branches when the latest big Y results come in. Note that the uh, big Y kits have on average only 2.5 unmatched variants, uh, with some kits only have a one, one unnamed variant. All these kits then have a common ancestors that are within the range of traditional Irish genealogy research from the late 1700s. As you might recall, that SNPs um, on average uh, 
develop every 100 to 144 years. Here's a summary with all the 24 BY3292 kits. And uh, you might recall that all the Z1513 kits that have tested positive for BY3292 have a value of 11 for STRDYS435. So let's state it right there. And so that's how we've been able to identify that all these kits are likely BY3292 positive through the STR number 111. Kits that have tested to 111 STR markers uh, all have the value 11 and been added to this year. And um, the ones that have just done STR markers are highlighted with a yellow background. Another STR, DYS710, is highlighted by the yellow line. In general, DYS710 has a value of 35 for the leftmost branch, being BY31266. And uh, the value of 34, or 33, for the two rightmost branches. In addition, there appears to be specific STRs whose values are associated with some of the BY3292 subbranches. So in uh, using these uh, signature STRs, we've been able to then, using the signature STR marker values, we've We've been able to several of the BY3292 identify kits, then we test it for specific SNPs related to a branch based upon the signature STRs. The kits that complete and confirm positive for a specific SNP are highlighted in a teal color. So these ones down here, they just uh, tested for a specific BY31266 SNP and uh, they were positive, similarly with these kits here. So that leads us back to the slide that you saw three, three back. Okay, and uh, as indicated, about half of the kits have identified their ancestor with an O'Neill family surname, and the other kits have identified their ancestor with another family name. Just less than half of the kits have identified their ancestors of being born in Ulster. Five of the kits are associated with County Antrim, three are from County Tyrone, and another kit from County Derry. Most of the other kits have identified the United States as their ancestor's location. One of the kits in FGC 3726, in this area here, has their ancestor connected to Fehlenbach O'Neill, who died in 1533, and is uh, the ancestor of the O'Neills of Eden Duff Castle. The three kits with ancestors identified from County Tyrone are all from the leftmost branch, BY31266. Mm -hmm. County Tyrone is typically considered the traditional territory of the Tyrone O'Neills, so further investigation is required to reconcile how the BY31266 and other BY32 two branches are related through genealogical research. This here is a slide shows a very simplified version of the traditional genealogy of the Clannaboy branch. The Clannaboy O'Neill and the Tyrone McShane Fuse branch split around 1200, and uh, as I mentioned before, with the sons of uh, Lazy Youth O'Neill. You may recall that Z1513's most common, recent common ancestor was estimated to be 830 to 1170 AD, which would have been prior to these two branches forming. And also, as I mentioned before, BY3292's most recent common ancestor was estimated to be around 1250 to 1465 AD, which is more recent than the ancestor of the Clannel Boys, Hugh the Bonds ring. So the estimate for BY3292 age is in around Hugh the Blonde. So various Clannaboy septs are highlighted on the slide. So these are just some of the uh, ones that have been identified through traditional uh, genealogy. So 
So uh, this here is a still a simplified version of some of the convoy septs from the 15th century onward. So it includes the O'Neills of Lisbon and the uh, O'Neills of Edinduff Carrick Castle, which is called Shane's Castle now, over the past few hundred years. And uh, the, the O'Neills of the Dummel of the Braid. And then, um, even more recent than that, are some other sets of the Conway O'Neills, as indicated here. So we're, um, so we'd like to, so we'd like to identify the convoy septs that are associated with BY 3292 subbranches. So connecting traditional genealogy with uh, with the genetic um, information we have. So we're in the process of recruiting members to upgrade the, to Big Y that have documented O'Neill lineage. This would be very helpful in matching the O'Neill septs to the SNP branches. Some of the specific convoy lines of interest include the O'Neills of Lisbon and um, the O'Neill of Viva and the line of Hugh O'Neill, who may be the son of Brian John, who immigrated to Virginia in the 1700s. We are encouraging all O'Neill variety kits to upgrade to 111 STR markers. This would confirm that the kits are either BY32 positive or negative, and provide information for further SNP testing. We'd like to assess kits that have hit the Irish traditional research early 1800s brick wall through appropriate DNA testing. That's that slide right there. <laughs> and finally, for a summary, in the project is just one example of many surname projects that have made significant advances through broad-based STR and big Y testing. I'm certain that there's members here in other surname projects that have had similar results. We are now very close to relating identified haplogroups to specific O'Neill septs. I'd like to do a sincere thanks to all the kits in the FT DNA O'Neill project especially those that have completed big white upgrades. We feel that we're in the golden age of genealogy research by using a broad range of genetic gene genealogy tools. Thank you. Thank you. Sean, come on up here. Um, have, have a seat, Dwayne. Uh, thanks very much for a fascinating project. I mean, the O'Neill clan is just such, and the O'Neill surname, surname in general, is just such a fascinating surname because it's one of the oldest in Ireland. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you this, and then I'm going to take that, so that you don't have to bother fiddling with it, because it is very, very fiddly. Um, uh, so it's great to see the, the, the big strides that you're making in the project. Um, where do you get most of your genealogy from? And I know I'm directing this at Sean because I saw him with a big book earlier on. Um, well, I'm, I'm very happy to announce that uh, my dad uh, did the genealogy of uh, all the main branches of the O'Neills and I have a copy of it there if people want to see it. Uh, unfortunately, it's out of print at the moment. So um, uh, it covers all the main branches of the O'Neills and we're trying to actually find the G, uh, DNA associated with all the main branches so that when people come and approach us we can say this is what you want if you want if you want to do a test here's a test to do and from that test we'll be able to identify which branch you're you're associated with uh, thank thank you Sean you can hold on to the the, the microphone this one's working fine now um, now, the O'Neills have spread out, of course, all over the world. So are most of your membership coming from America, Ireland? What about some of the places they went to? Because they went to uh, the countries in Europe where the O'Neills today would not possibly be speaking English. They went to the Caribbean, where you've got O'Neills in Puerto Rico. So where, where are your membership coming from? Uh, uh, the majority of our members are from the United States. Mm -hmm. and, but we do have significant numbers from Europe, uh, specifically the UK. Obviously we have loads of members in Ireland and in Northern Ireland. Uh, we also have members in France. Uh, we have members down in South America. We have uh, members from Russia and I'd like to welcome Lydia from Russia. Uh, <laughs> uh, so 
so, yeah, so we, we are, we, we're, we're spread around the globe. And in many ways, the O'Neill diaspora is, is quite um, unusual in the sense that uh, most of the Irish diaspora would have been, if you like, uh, poor people uh, emigrating to find a better life. But the O'Neills had to kind of flee the country. There was the flight of the Earls. So you actually went to places that maybe a lot of other Irish people wouldn't have gone to. Well, I'm not a historian, but <laughs> I, 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 we did. Yeah, uh, uh, we went. To, uh, obviously, we went to Spain and we joined the, the armies there. We went to France and joined the armies there, and uh, as a result, we, we we fought in a lot, lots of lots of wars uh, around Europe, and in I suppose we also fought in the United States as well. So, so which of you guys speaks Russian then? <laughs> you speak fluent English, I'm sure. Um, but have you had to found that you've had to uh, use Google Translate a lot, for example? Uh, not really, no. no I think a lot, a lot of people uh, speak, speak English. English and put the rest of us yeah. to shame, really. Um, questions for the O'Neill team. So we have one from Jared here. I'm going to use my microphone because you can hold on to that and uh, pass it between you. Uh, yes, yeah, so a, a few suggestions and, uh, and a question. Uh, I have a volume at home, it's a great book of Irish genealogies, 2,600 pages of ancient genealogies. And I'm just wondering, um, how, how many do you think you will identify, matching the ancient genealogy to the SNF, right? But, uh, in, in other sources, uh, Mark Chasky from Trinity College, he published over 100 detailed genealogies of chiefly lines, mm -hmm. okay? And, and they are all available on, online. Um, and uh, the, the, the one which intrigues me is the, um, I think the 13, 16 one, 17, which is the 15, DF, 13, DF 27, yeah. and we all know that highest frequency of the DF 27 is Iberia. So uh, have you found the Malaysian connection? Let me just pass the uh, microphone there to, to Fred, that'd be great. Yeah. Uh, now that's where we find the fact that our DF 27 we have that whole block of 29, 25 snips before it shows up here. So if you look at that 3,000 years, where's it been for 3,000 years? And so it probably made some path, maybe it came direct from Spain, maybe it came from Scotland, someplace else, but we don't know where it came from, and I would love to find out. It is a tantalizing mystery, isn't it? Uh, other questions for the O'Neill Project team? We have uh, several here, so I'm going to come down to this lady here. There we go. I'll hold it for you. Sean, I want to know about your little black book. Oh. How, how, <laughs> how do, can we acquire a copy of that? Uh, I, I'll have to get it republished. Okay. You have to get it republished, so it's not available at the moment? No. Okay. But that's something to uh, put on your Christmas wi wish list, definitely. <laughs> Question here. Have you passed the microphone to each other? Are the Southern O'Neill's defendants of the Northern O'Neill's, or are they sitting on the same timeline horizontally? Which of you would like to answer that question? Which O'Neill's there are you referring to? The, the Southern O'Neill's and the Northern O'Neill's. There's a break between the Southern and the Northern O'Neill's. As far as I can tell, both of them are, are origined about the same time. Uh, so then they both start back around the year 1000 plus or minus, and they all, so it's, it's an old name in both places. Right. So, so is there a genetic, well, there probably would be a genetic connection at some point in time between the two, but you think that it might be 2000, 3000, 4000 year back, rather than well, 1000 years back? Well, the connection between them, as far as we can tell, is the, the DF-13 which dates back to the, um, around 2000 BC. Okay. Or maybe you can call it 1650, you know, it depends. There's a, there's a margin of error there, and you want to just go back to what the bards say, where it should be from Elysium. But it's well before the time of surnames, and well before the time of the Gaelic class. Oh, yeah. 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 <clears throat> Great. We have a question here from Jim. Come in, thank you. So I'm wondering if you've explored the possibility of putting together a SNP pack that would uh, you know, leverage the results of the big wide testing and then help you parse out the different individual uh, results. Can you actually do that though? Put a SNP pack together for all of the O'Neill's or would you have to have several SNP packs for each of the branches? 
So for um, for, for BY 3292 po positive, we've had very good success at using signature STRs to um, um, uh, recommend a specific uh, SNP test. And so that was shown in one of the slides where I think all but one uh, recommended SNP test came back as positive. Now for the, uh, the group for um, BY3292 uh, ne negative, being the Z1513 group, so right now, uh, we, we had, as I mentioned, we had the challenge with the uh, branches, okay, it seems like there was a SNP desert there for 300 years where the, as you recall on the slide, the, the um, three branches on, on, on one side don't have any specific SNPs, and so we're using, at this point in time, STR values, but we're hoping that over the, the, the next um, short while that more um, new big Y tests will um, flush that out. And we have a question from Patty Walton. I'm trying to figure out who discovers these new SNPs. I understood that BY... I'm holding it away from you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I can't hear myself. I understood that BY indicated it was discovered by family tree DNA and was from a big Y, but when I checked Sean on the big tree, he's a BY, but on family tree, he's still a Z, and BY 32400 isn't even in the family tree DNA haplotree. tree. Yes, uh, family tree doesn't recognize BY 32400. Um, be because it's in the uh, DY's, uh, DZ19 uh, mm -hmm. region, mm -hmm. but um, the, the, um, the big tree recognizes uh, the, that particular SNP, and that, that's why it's shown on the, um, the big tree um, uh, um, as, a, as a branch. Part of what we're looking for is we're looking for places we're actually looking for additional SNPs to break it up because what we ended up with was everyone in parallel, no common SNP. So they came up with one which is not a strong one, but it's at least a way to show some grouping. And they did say that the others did not have that. So it's, it's a weak one, but it did show a little bit of a way to, to break it up. And it's been consistent too. It's been consistent too. Great. Okay, well, um, I, I think it's fascinating work that you're doing, and the way that the uh, project is evolving is, is incredible. Uh, you're discovering more branches, and of course the value for the people that are actually in your project is that they can hang their genealogies on your SNP slash STR tree like Christmas baubles on a Christmas tree. Uh, so that's the, in, that's the invitation to all the O'Neills. There's also another invitation to all the O'Neills, and uh, Sean, if you take that microphone and just let them know. Yeah. Uh, everybody's entitled to join us in uh, the Lansdowne room for a drink afterwards, uh, if you want to continue this discussion. Okay, thank you. And on that note, it just remains for me to thank this wonderful expert panel for the incredibly great work that you're doing on the O'Neill project, and hopefully you'll come back in a few years with another update and um, bring some more O'Neills with you. So ladies and gentlemen, I give you the O'Neill DNA Project here.